the question is, do doctors draw? Have we been trained to draw? And I don't think any doctor really has been formally trained to draw. Perhaps we used to draw more anatomy than we do now, but there's so many images around. But I think people often draw as an aid memoir to themselves when they're learning. And all doctors will draw at some stage in their professional life because it's how we explain. And I'm sure that explaining to anybody, students, patients, um, other doctors, you have to have the ability to reduce a complex concept to something very simple. And I think that's why we use drawing, because the visual sense of drawing is just very easily understandable by people. I'm a doctor, and within that I'm essentially a diagnostician. So I use images for my work and we create those images from all sorts of different um, basic science models. We, we use x-ray, we use uh, magnetic resonance imaging, we use ultrasound. So all sorts of different modalities we use in order to create an image which is the essence really of, of diagnostics in medicine. Um, my job is to look at those images and to try and interpret them, to work out what's normal, what's abnormal, and then translate that into words so that I can convey the sense of what is wrong with a patient to another doctor who can then act on that information. Um, so all the time in my work I'm surrounded by beautiful images and, and the, the images them, themselves are lovely. They're extremely uh, beautiful, many of them. A lot of them require your input in how the images are created and a lot of them just come out as uh, you know, ready-made images from a machine. But what I thought I'd do is just to show you, first of all, some of the images that I work with and then how I then would use drawing to um, enhance uh, the understanding of these images either to students who I might be talking to, um, to patients or to other doctors. One of the things that we do um, a lot of is CT scanning which means that you're taking axial slices through uh, a human body which is done with x-rays and um, you come up with a series of images and, and in any one patient examination I'll be looking at a whole series of these. So the whole procedure is very um, three-dimensional. So for example, this is a scan through the chest and we'll see the great vessels. As you go down, you'll see images of the heart and the structures of the heart further into the ventricles here and you're coming, these are the black things of the lungs and then you're coming onto the diaphragms, onto the abdomen liver, stomach, spleen, pancreas, kidneys, and so on down into the pelvis. And then we can also change these images around so that we look at um, them in another plane. So here we're looking coronally now, so we've changed the image around to see the structure. So you can see the basic things that I am looking at. So why would I then use drawing? I think one of the things that um, the static images don't do for me and when I'm trying to explain something to somebody they don't give you the dynamic they don't give you the temporal uh, possibility of change um, this we use diagrammatic representation a lot because you can see that the uh, th the images that we use in themselves are very complex and what we want to do is to extract from that the essence of one particular aspect of patient care so we use diagrams a lot in teaching and understanding and training and this is a diagram of how cancer spreads in the pancreas um, Clearly we play with the images a lot and, and if you're lecturing you want to try and create drawings and images which are going to have some sort of impact factor uh, for the patient. Um, I'll just show you an example of the sort of things that I might do 
if I'm teaching, for example. So, I mean, one of the things that happens in um, the embryo in terms of the pancreas is when uh, a baby is developing, the pancreas starts in two bits. And if I'm trying to explain to students how that develops as the baby grows and turns into the final um, disposition of the pancreas, I want to show them what is happening with time. So I'll use arrows and I'll bring that around there and I'll take the pancreatic duct and I'll join it there so what was there will come around. So I can show them then how the final pancreas might look. And it's quite messy to you, I'm sure, as a drawing. It has certain limitations. But what it does for me is it allows me to show some temporal change in the basic structure. And it reduces um, a drawing, it reduces an image to something which they can understand. Another example is if I'm, I'm talking to a patient about what their surgery might involve. And um, clearly, patients uh, need to know when they're going in for an operation what might happen to them. One good example is surgery that we do for obesity and I'm sure you know there's a lot of obesity surgery going on now. So um, patients will have what we call a gastric bypass and so I might explain to the patient well what we're going to do is we're going to cut the stomach there and we're going to staple that bit and then we're going to take a loop from here and we're going to bring up we're going to bring up a loop of small bowel up to here to join this so that this is all cut out this will join to there your food will come down like that and the bile and all the juices that you need in order to digest the food will go into this loop and this loop will be joined surgically to there so you've got a sense of what actually the patient can understand and they can work out where their food's going to go, what bit's going to be cut off and the fact that the essential stuff that they need to digest the food is going to be um, in the right place. So that's one of the ways I do it. Um, sometimes, um, you know, this is an example of what we were talking about, about the pancreas. Um, Another example is, is looking at, at flow in structures. Um, so uh, this is something from one of my lectures about how, how blood goes into the liver. And I would want to show somebody how, how the blood is passing in there and what proportion goes from the artery and the vein and how that's important in terms of um, how lesions appear um, in the liver. This is just an example to show you all the different modalities that we might be using and how that um, shows up. But this is, this is from one of my lectures talking about the small bowel and this is my rather pathetic attempt at drawing that. But it's reduced to a diagrammatic form such that I can show how the changes happen in this villus fold from that to something which is fat and swollen and it can be due to various pathological processes or to something which is nodular um, and, and changes the fold like that. So I'm really just trying to um, explain in a diagrammatic form what's happening pathologically.